some people don't think there's such big gains in either party. Nonetheless, on the Republican wins, let's start with that. Non-defense spending is capped. Defense spending is actually going to go up a little bit, but spending on things like education and transportation and law enforcement and all those sorts of programs, discretionary spending, those will be basically level for the next two years under this deal. Work requirements will be expanded for food stamps a little bit in that the upper limit of the age of people who might have to work to get food stamps has been moved up some, something that Republicans wanted, many wanted more than what they got here. They'll claw back $30 billion in COVID funds, money not spent on COVID. They think that could help balance things out. They will restart student loan payments. The suspension of student loan payments started under Donald Trump. It has continued under Joe Biden. Both presidents thinking it was necessary. The plan has been to restart those anyway. Don't confuse this, though, with the plan to forgive student loans that the Supreme Court is considering right now. It's a different matter. And cut IRS funding. A lot of Democrats have really backed this plan that's out there. It's already been approved put more money into the tracking down of wealthy taxpayers to make them pay more of their share. Republicans have said, no, you're just going after all taxpayers. We don't want more of this. That's been cut back a little bit too. No work requirements for people receiving Medicaid. That is the, the health program for people with low income and other, other concerns. There will be no work requirements for that, though some Republicans want it. Maintain climate and clean energy initiatives. Again, some Republicans were not keen on that. Democrats said they have to have it. They really wanted it. That basically is going untouched. A few little minor things. And the debt limit will be suspended until 2025. You could argue that this is a win for both parties.